Oh, there we go. Turn the fan off. Stop all the blowing. Hey, good people. How are you doing? Uh, this is one of those. I, this, right now, we're still, I'm sitting in South Africa on campus of the historic University of Fort Hare, to which I am a postgraduate student um, researcher. And um, uh, it's, it's New Year's Eve, one of my favorite. Well, I only have two uh, celebrations in the, in, the, in, uh, in the year. One is New Year's Eve, it's now, tonight, you know. And the other one is my birthday, which happens, you know, early July, well, six months from now, six, seven months from now, in July, um, third to be exact. And so those are the only two celebrations that I really have. The other stuff, you know, I, some, some I know, some I don't. I, well, I, I, doesn't matter anyway. But also, what happens in traditionally New Year's, at least in the Western world, you have these lists and you know things that went past or whatever, or things you're gonna do in the future, that whole kind of thing. So I'm gonna go over my list. That's the whole thing at this uh, last uh, official um, uh, dispatch for the year. Uh, first, uh, there's some of the things I discovered this year that I really that I really like. One, one, I just when I bought I bought the empty jar. It's a thing. Uh, uh, this is a product called a uh, uh, ginger pickle. I guess it's pickled ginger, and this stuff is great. It's 30, it's 30 rands. Like a rand right now is like this. One dollar equals like 13. So say, round it off. One dollar is 14 rand. So you figure it out. Anyway, uh, this is actually a product of Pakistan uh, because. Um, what we have in South Africa, there's a lot of Pakistani presence, a lot of Chinese presence, a lot of, well, of course, Indian presence. I guess Pakistan and India to me, they're the same. Um, so anyway, so, that, so I discovered this this year, and I swear by it. I love this stuff. Uh, just in case you don't know, uh, ginger is one of the things that's very good for you. Ginger and garlic are sort of, sort of like the compa um, companion kind of thing. What you should do is take ginger in the morning, take garlic at night. That's the best thing. If you take garlic in the morning, it's in your system all day long, and you know, it's not, uh, some people don't like that. But ginger is really good, especially if you just cut it up and put it in your tea in the morning, and then you can you can chew on that ginger for a little while. Okay, let me get off that. Uh, another thing, I, I wrote some stuff. That, oh, uh, when I was in uh, when I was in New York, this uh, well, summer in the in the uh, northern hemisphere, winter right now in the northern hemisphere. When I was in New York in July, uh, around my birthday time, what? Um, uh, I, I, I went to my favorite, there's an apothecary, apoc whatever, one of those places there you can a lot of herbs and stuff like on 13th Street um, down, uh, down at the uh, Integral Yoga Center, an Integral Yoga Store, and the apothecary, apothecary, nah, anyway, <laughs> I get stuff from them, I, I get the name right. Um, but uh, uh, there's this um, tea, or this herb, if you will, called um, uh, mullein, M-U-L-L-I-E-N, M. -U -L -L -I -E -N. M as in Mary, U L L I E N, and it's I wrote it down here. It's a, uh, oh, no one anyway, but it's you know it's good for bruises, burns, hemorrhoids, gout. Gout, by the way, it's, it's just a diversion. I, I really, you know, I um, we in South Africa. There's wine, you know, wine is the, is the well, alcohol is a big thing here. But I, I do, I do like a glass of wine. Let me put this way: a bottle seven. Uh, 750 milliliter bottle of wine will last me three three days or three nights if you will because that's that's where I roll. But other than that, I stay away from all that heavy stuff, whatever heavy. Even though I do have some scotch, but I'm not into scotch. I just keep it for guests like that. So anyway, so I, I miss that because gout because of overindulgence in gout. Anyway, so mullen back to the mullen. M U L L I E N. Uh, tea is good for that. Also supposed to be good for diarrhea, asthma, and coughs. It's kind of interesting. They even say that you can actually smoke it. So. Oh, let's get off on that for a second. So for all you people who smoke your herb, you know, your, your sacred herb, you know, you could put a little bit of mullein in there and it would, it, would, it would be good for you. It would, you know, fluff out the herb, you know, so you don't have, well, you know, instead of putting tobacco, put the mullein in, it's better. It's better for you anyway. And, and while we're on the sacred herb, there's this whole push, especially in the United States, you know, to legalize uh, marijuana. Look, here's my take on it. All them brothers and sisters been put in jail for marijuana. They're gonna legalize it now. The brothers and sisters are still in jail. When when uh, um, by the time they get out, all of, all these entrepreneurs are making their money off of people that have, can have the money to set up these marijuana whatever they want to set up. I think it's not a, a good move. If I would advise, say for South Africa, it's like do not legalize the sacred herb. Just decriminalize it. Decriminalization is the move because if you decriminalize it, what happens? The street vendors, if you wanted the, the people who grow in the bush, whatever have you, basically um, they can still operate. 
if you if you make it legal, then all these big conglomerates or whatever come in and whatever have you. So my advice always is to don't go to just decriminalize the sacred herb so people won't go to jail and, and disrupt their lives because of some whim of something like that. And I went off a little bit. I didn't want to go off on that. But anyway, uh, it's like that. Um, oh, let me uh, let me put this down. This is the last the last thing. This, this is a short one. Um, my my, my uh, hero of the year, if you want to put it, my hero of the, uh, might even be the decade for now, is one Colin Kaepernick, the football player, the guy from the, just, you know, the quarterback for the San Francisco 49ers. What he did was just absolutely astonishing, magnificent, but bold, new, whatever it is. And all he did was not participate not participate, not give kudos, not give uh, uh, um, uh, anything to, to oppression. And it, in that act itself, the way he did it, it upset so many people, it didn't, and they didn't, I mean, it was like, it was a beautiful moment. So my hero of the, of the year of 2016, going into 2017, is Colin Kaepernick. Just an amazing, just an amazing thing, just to, to take a knee. Not participate, and that's what we should be doing. You know, we should not start. Don't listen to these these things. Don't react to to uh, to, to to absurdities. I mean, right now, think about what's going on right now. The reason why one of the reasons uh, for this election cycle here was really people don't say it. I don't know why they don't say it, but people are, fr are tired of war. Forget this. They don't want to go to war. And, and, and it seemed like uh, Donald Trump, when Donald Trump, you know, President-elect Donald Trump, uh, he, he didn't want war, right? No, Hillary didn't say nothing about war, but she's, she's a warmonger, right? But the point really is they don't want war. And when I'm looking around right now, what I see, the, the most devastating thing, what they do all the time with this, with this um, what do you call that, uh, distractions. It's, it's like a, 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 one of those magician kind of people. They'll do this with this hand, and they're about to be looking at that, and they're doing something else with here. And I mean, the biggest distraction right now is everybody thinking this whole Russian thing. I don't really get it, but this whole Russian thing, that to me has got to be a distraction. Because uh, I think the biggest problem is war. They want to pay war. But forget Russia. It's not even Russia. I think it's China. And it's China because China is, is slick. I mean, China, you know, I got to admit, so China does some stuff. Right now, you look at Africa. They have militarized Africa. There's some of these bases, which is a belt right across northern Africa, a base of that. So, and then you have, if you go to the, to the uh, China Seas or whatever have you, there's military bases all over there. So China, they're, they're sort of surrounding China, you know, provoking and trying to provoke war with, 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 with China. And of course, Russia, they provoke and trying to provoke war with China. China I like, the last I heard, Russia's not taking a bait. You know, they kicked out some diplomats and, and, and Russia's going like, ah, oh, yeah, 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 sure, 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 you'll get over it. They're just not listening, you know. So that's the whole point, I, I guess, is you have to take, you have to t do, your, do your thing, take your lane and just not uh, go for the stuff that they're throwing in one hand and, and then beating you over the head with another because uh, the United States, they, they, uh, my biggest problem right now is this whole thing with the generals. Uh, basically, uh, Trump, his cabinet is shaping up, there's a lot of generals involved. Why would you have that many generals? I have no idea, but um, it's, it's, not, it's not a good thing. So uh, let, let, me, let me just leave, leave it at that, I, I think. Um, uh, but just remember that as history has shown us, uh, like FDR, I just found out like FDR's father or grandfather, whatever, uh, was a drug dealer, you know, dealing opium. And John Kerry, his grandfather, drug dealer, you know, of course you have the uh, prohibition with the alcohol like that. So, you know, everybody who's been successful has always been a drug dealer for <laughs> A truck dealer first. Kind of interesting. I'm sorry, it was just to the side. I didn't really mean anything. But, well, I did mean something, but just to the side. But the point uh, uh, really is uh, my biggest thing, aside from Colin Kaepernick, this see this year that I found out is the thing called we call Li-Fi. Uh, uh, instead of Wi-Fi, is electro is um as a radio wave, like electromagnetic wave. But uh, Li-Fi was light waves, and Li-Fi is uh, it replaces uh, um, it replaces Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi. Is, is fast is for your connections, but Li-Fi is 10,000 times faster than, than, than Wi-Fi. 
So the things to watch is, is that live fire, I think, is like a, a, a change in, in, it's a changer. And, uh, and, and, and that's it. So, so my big things this year is, is, is again, is a mulling of the, the herb to, to make it into a, a tea, um, uh, M-U-L-L-I-E-N, uh, ginger pickle, um, Colin Kaepernick taking a knee, um, uh, and um, uh, I mean, I guess that's, that's really about it. Live Fire, of course, we just mentioned, uh, that's it. So uh, that's for me uh, this year from T, that would be me, from the Pattersons, taking the train to the bed, letting you know what I only suspect.